Moonray is a far future, surreal sci-fi action RPG built on Bitcoin and powered by Stacks blockchain. Allowing you a triple gaming experience that allows play to earn mechanics, tradable NFTs economy and the foundation for a metaverse. Follow Moonray on Twitter at Moonray Game. Go to the website moonray.game. Please jump into the Discord for active conversations. Links in the description. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Thanks a lot. Some of the gameplay, I know with the Unreal Engine and ZBrush and simulations, I, I find it interesting that uh, I think in a previous interview you stated that uh, you brought some um, more machine learning and and some AI uh, developers uh, together to build on Unreal Engine. Uh, can you just kind of explain how you you thought to bring different people together that didn't have a gaming background to create something? Yeah, I mean, like basically, this? we look for talent all over the place, and we look a lot outside of the traditional game industry. So we look a lot at VFX artists, um, people that are doing interesting things with real time algorithms, and there are you know, uh, websites and, and, and like kind of like um, discussion boards, um, like Discord servers where people are, are exploring these ideas. And a lot of a lot of it's real time programming. Um, some of it's not real time, but it's procedural algorithmic programming um, for creating, you know, visuals. Um, and a lot of times that those people aren't necessarily in the game industry, but once you see their work, there's obvious game, um, you know, applications of, of that type of, you know, visual exploration. So that's something that um, I've always been really interested in and something that we, we focus on a lot, you know, and I'm still like, we're, we're bringing on a whole bunch of designers now that, you know, have never made anything for a game. Maybe they play games, maybe they don't. We don't really care. Usually as long as they're doing interesting visual stuff, that, that's all we care about. So there's, I think, a lot more talent out there outside of the game industry. Um, and I think that's one of the ways to create something that's new, because if you go to the game industry exclusively for talent, everyone's doing the same tutorials everyone's taking the same classes and things become standardized you know real quick so you know if you want uh, a game with orcs there's a thousand and one people that can do that and it's not that hard to find but if you want to do a game that's that looks very different you've got to look outside the game industry and, and that's that's really what we're doing so we, we do have a lot of game industry talent you know especially on the, on the programming side and on the game design side but on the visual side we're, we're really looking outside yeah, and I, I, to add to that, um, you know, absolutely certain something, certainly something to be said about the expertise there is in the in, in the legacy studios and game development and the, you know, the talent that goes into that. But we also, to some extent, this is a, a different business model that um, needs to be applied to to a blockchain game, and, and therefore, naturally, we're also looking for um, some different type of talent. So in this. Obviously, around you know the economy, um, it's a lot of different um, types of skill sets that we want to recruit to. But also in terms of how you know what types of in-game activities and so on are important and need to be focused on uh, to actually support such an economy. So th there is uh, um, certainly some overlap, but there is also a natural reason why we need to go outside of the traditional gaming industry uh, to find the talent we need to be successful in in building this business model. Yeah, I mean, to us, I mean, we really see that, you know, the metaverse is going to be lots of smaller metaverses, at least initially for a while, until there's another technological shift of some sort. It's like everyone's building their own metaverse. Um, and then there's going to be bridges between different metaverses. Um, for us, a metaverse is a 3D environment, persistent online environment that really is a, a like a social kind of interaction. It's a place to hang out with friends, um, you know, to meet up engage in activities that you might be doing in other places now i think uh like for example all, all, all the um, chat type of functionality that you get in discord or on social media now i think a lot of that will will switch over to a metaverse people will spend more time in in a 3d metaverse and less time you know on chat programs like discord or on facebook or on uh, instagram and i think those things are all going to survive to you know to some degree uh, in some form but but to us the metaverse is a, 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 like a, a a 3D environment, it's got to look cool, and it's, it's a place for social interactions, first and foremost. In, in this uh, transition to the, the new economy as well, this play to earn model, has that radically uh, redesigned your approach to the gaming Absolutely. world? Absolutely. You know, blockchain is going to totally change the game industry. 
um, it, it's going to turn it completely upside down because it's a totally different economic model and a totally different way of, of making money as a, as, as a game company. So what we think that the next generation of, of um, gaming companies, it's, it's not going to be a, neither a crypto company nor a game company that survives until the next round. We think it's going to be a new type of company that takes elements from both crypto companies and game companies and makes like a new like hybrid approach. Um, for us, from a, a game design perspective, it's really, it has totally changed the, the way we think about the game, the way we think about gameplay. Um, you have to think about how uh, gameplay and an economy intersect. I think if you don't do that, you're, you're going to limit yourself. Um, I think it's going to be a market for premium games for quite a while, but it's going to be a shrinking market. I mean, it's kind of like saying there's a market for buying LPs now. I mean, it's true. Um, and the market for LPs, from my understanding, is, is you know, LPs, but you know, like, like uh, vinyl, like uh, records. I think it's big, you know, as big as it's ever been. But as a percentage of the total market, it's, it's infinitesimal. And I think that's going to be what, what happens to the premium game model. I think it'll continue for a while, but as a percentage of the total game market, it's going to shrink and shrink and shrink. And, and for us, GameFi is this mix of uh, gaming interaction, a, a gameplay with a, a token economy that supports it. One of the big distinctions that we make with what we're building is that we're making a token economy that supports the gameplay. So everything that uh, the economy does has to make gameplay better. Um, otherwise, it's just purely kind of like some weird new form of financial speculation, which we do think that there's a lot of, and that's not an approach that we think is, is going to last. Um, so that intersection of uh, a, a real economy and gameplay, the, the companies that can figure out how to manage that are the companies that are, that are going to succeed. And that's what we're focused on. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think this ties back to your previous question, uh, you know, very well about the uh, where, where to find talent, and it is uh, a very, very different approach uh, from our view. Uh, you know what what you need to be successful and what you need to focus in, on. And just like Rodrigo said, um, bringing in an economy, with play to earn uh, mechanics into a game, you you have to really balance very carefully to make sure that the supports in uh, supports actually game experience so that it doesn't become like a just an ad hoc thing that feels forced and, and it really you know the only reason you do it is to, is to to earn in, in the game this has to there has to be a a, 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 a very close uh, correlation between the in-game activities uh, uh, that you are you know uh, excited to partake in this game world and at the same time, you have a whole economic system that supports supports this and makes it even more exciting than what is you know possible uh, without it. You guys have seen a tremendous amount of growth on Discord, and a lot of people are coming in. A lot of people are excited. I, I know we are excited, and uh, I know Zero Authority DAO uh, members will like to uh, build something in uh, Moonray later, but uh, can you guys tell us the growth of Discord and and some of the events that uh, Tin Walls has just uh, did a, a live event last week. Can you tell us how Discord and doing more events is going to play in, into getting people more excited into Moonray? Yeah, I mean, what we see uh, Discord for us is almost like a, like a beta test for a metaverse. You know, um, so we see is, you know, Discord is kind of the first place that our community is going to come and, and start to interact. Uh, and then over time, this is going to move into um, a 3D environment, you know, our our world that, that we're building inside of Moonray. So, I mean, we are seeing a lot of interest now and it's been really great. I think part of the reason is because I think we have something concrete and tangible. Um, all we're doing right now in Discord pretty much is just showing gameplay clips and showing clips of the uh, the VFX as, as we build them. Um, and I think people can see that we're building um, a real game, a game that's going to be fun to play, and that we are building a, a new kind of world that's going to be fun to explore. So I think that's where a lot of the enthusiasm comes. And then the fact that we are, uh, you know, we have a, a strategy for NFTs and for a token economy. Um, I think people understand that that means that this, you know, this is going to be the future of gaming. So, so getting in early uh, on on the games that are going to be at, like at the forefront of this revolution. I think it's cool. I mean, it's cool for us, and I think it's cool for you know for all of our our, our fans and community out there. So we we are going to be having a whole lot more events, like the one we just did with Ten Walls. Um, he did the soundtrack for the game. He's working on more music for the game. We're going to start 
dropping some new remixes of his real soon. Um, but we like having those types of like, you know, we're going to start having DJ parties, you know, on a regular basis for us. It's just fun. Um, and it's a way of, uh, it's another type of interaction, another type of social interaction with, with the community that I think is, is kind of like a hint of what's going to come, uh, in the, in the metaverse at some point, you know, for us, the game that we're building now is just really the first version of, um, of the game and the first version of one type of interaction that's going to be possible in Moonray. But there's going to be a whole lot of other types of interactions that are eventually possible. Um, uh, and that's that's when I think a real metaverse, you know, um, I think becomes something tangible, something real and beyond just marketing hype. Uh, on that note, um, we we, yeah, I, we noticed or realized, uh, realized that uh, a lot of people it was, it was taken by surprise how fast our Discord grew. Um, and, you know, if you really, if we understand, really think about it, it's, it's based on very little activity from, from our part. Uh, we, we have presented uh, and been very sparse and very careful with the information that we have put out so far. And, and you know, we, we are uh, very uh, conscious of this. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strategy that we have decided to take to make sure that, you know, we don't really like to talk about things that we, you know, don't know uh, how to and when we will deliver. Um, we, we think that um, there, we, you know, the, the community has seen its fair share of, uh, of promises, which um you know might or might not um uh, you know in the long term be beneficial for for um you know that the game itself but the way that we look at it is that we we have plenty to share we've been very overweight on development and very underweight on marketing activities i guess that's one way of looking at it and we uh once we get going here to start showing the content we have i think that you know the community will see um, and, and get presented much, much um, more of what's going on and when it's going to be released. And we're very excited for that. One thing I, I love about a lot of the core contributors and founders and stacks is that, it, like you said, it's heavy on the, the dev side and light on the, the marketing. I think for us, especially it makes sense as a game because you know uh, until you have something that people can get their hands on and play, there's really not a whole lot of talking you should do, in my opinion. You know, so we're doing very little. Um, you know, gameplay clips here and there, some of the VFX that we're developing. We're gonna start putting out more of the backstory real soon. But it's it's gonna get it'll get a lot more intense once we have an early access build out that people can download, and and then people will start to get a much better sense of what we're building. But we'd rather let you know, it's it's like the product has to come first, the game has to come first, and then all marketing is there just to support the game. So until that there's a game that people can touch. Um, there's not a whole lot for us to to talk about, you know, and that's kind of how we're, how we're approaching this. We're going to be relatively quiet until we have something in the market, and that's going to come, you know, Q1 next year. I was say, I was saying this, you know, knowing that the community. I mean, we it's it's absolutely you know fundamental. It's you know, it's a strategic pillar for any blockchain game to have a very strong community. So the fact that we are, you know, but we think this goes both ways. We we have to make sure that. We, we take care of that relationship and building that trust, uh, you know, very carefully so that uh, when we release things, we actually deliver on it. When, when we, you know, put things out there, there's a plan behind and, and, and you know, people can get, get excited and speculate as to what, what's going to come, but there's something that's going to come. For future opportunities, are is there uh, going to be any opportunities for community or for people in stacks to uh, uh, invest on Republic, or is that completely done? There probably will be. We don't have any concrete details on that yet, um, but there probably will another opportunity at some point from the public to to take part. As far as opportunities for the NFT whitelist, uh, there's still on OpenSea the ability to buy a. a pre-sale mint pass is that still an option for yes and then we are going to have more contests and competitions in our discord to earn um whitelist spots so that's that's not over um we're, we're going to be doing more with that so it, it's you know i think that we're going to uh, there'll be at least a few more months of opportunities for people to get on the whitelist our first nft drop isn't going to come until our our own marketplace is up and running which will be sometime q1 next year um so we'll see how soon we do our first nft drops so it's not going to be imminent, um, but it's not too far away. Um, and between now and then, we're going to be doing a, a lot of different competitions and, and, and things like that to give, give people a chance. On the, the clips that you guys have been sharing, 
can you tell us like how the game will look, how it will evolve over time? And uh, just some of those clips that I've seen just with the physics of, of the gameplay and this kind of uh, seamless experience. So, you know, our idea of what a technology, like a really far future technology would look like is that it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna appear simple, almost organic. Um, and there's no distinction between man-made and, um, and and organic, you know, in, in the future. So everything in the world has various levels of, of, of these elements embedded in it. And the the more of, of an element that's embedded in, a, in an item, the more fluid it can become or almost sentient as well. So we're going to be exploring some, I think, different ideas in sci-fi. And it, what you see in the gameplay clips is you see that those, those physics simulations um, that are going to be part of like the, the base, the the magic system and the ability system of the players. Um, that's that's what you're seeing there. And then when we put clips, where just shows some of these, you know, usually they're gold or they're red. Just shows these little clips of like, a, you know, like a, a different type of fluid. That's basically our um, our internal um, VFX development tool. How we program these shaders, and and that's how we start uh, coming up with with a, a certain look or a certain effect and then from there we bring it into unreal engine so we like to share sometimes um clips of how it looks in unreal um on on a in gameplay on and the characters we just show just a straight up you know little um um vfx clip of one of these uh, simulations uh live i just think they look cool basically and and it's almost kind of like a little a little piece of art that we like to put out there but also gives people an idea of kind of how we how we build things behind the scenes Can you tell us more about uh, the characters and Iltar? I Iltar, yeah, Iltar. Iltar. Yeah, Miam, yes. Yeah, I mean, so the um, to explain the backstory of the game, I think that we're going to start putting out, you know, at some point in the near future, like a, a small YouTube series. We're, we're working on that now, um, like an, a small animated series to explain sort of the, the world of Moonray and um, how we're thinking about all this. You know, one of the ideas behind this is that any you know technology that gets advanced enough um, starts to you know I mean it starts to look like magic, and then the idea is that a religion builds up around it. So a lot of um, the game is going to be around the concept of, of gods. Um, now, are they really gods, or is it just like really advanced technology? That's you know that's a separate question. Um, but but that's sort of kind of like the, the basic you know structure of the game is that there's you know super powerful beings that are essentially like like gods um and those are the basis of the different factions in the game and uh but everything is related to this this core technology that the, the the game world you know takes advantage of so we will be putting out more backstory you know between now you know in the coming months so between now and, and the early access release um in a few different um formats um to explain some of these these different characters but we have a really great creative team we're really excited about um that are that are really putting together like a really uh, interesting and expansive world that we'll be able to explore both in the single player game and then ongoing in, in multiplayer co-op missions for, for quite a long time. We, um, <clears throat> exactly, we, we have, you know, planned for, you know, many, many hours of gameplay and, and we have storyboarded this up. Uh, we are in the process now of kind of picking out what to, you know, present to the public in the near future and how we are gonna, you know, piece that story together um, or, or put that out for people to piece it together um, uh, as we go. Can you tell us why you, you picked uh, to build on stacks and secured by Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we are believers in the, the fundamental premise of stacks, you know, which is, you know, I mean, my version of it is that, you know, Bitcoin is the money layer and stacks is the smart contract layer. Separating those out and having a gas token and a true, uh, you know, a true um, money, you know, token, which is, is Bitcoin, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, that we, we do think that that's the right architecture long term, um, and so we, we believe in that in that general concept. So that's why for us, you know, building on stacks uh, and having Bitcoin as the the final security layer, especially when you want to build something that hopefully becomes valuable, or our own token is valuable, our NFTs are valuable. You want the maximum security for that, and and um, I think that's Bitcoin. And I don't think that's going to change. I think it's going to be Bitcoin, you know, forever. Um, and then that does enable us to have other functionality that you can't have on other blockchains, like the opportunity to earn yield in Bitcoin, um, to to earn yield either from a, you know let's say a token or really from our NFTs in, in Bitcoin. That's something that you know um, that stacks proof of transfer 
consensus mechanism just handles you know natively so um we're really happy with stacks we think that everyone understands bitcoin and what bitcoin is um i think there's a reason for that um i think that proof of work as the fundamental security layer um is the is the best personally i mean I'm, i think proof of stake is, is fine i think there's there's uses for that but personally i would rather have all my money secured by proof of work no, and also there's an aspect of uh you know mainstream adoption uh a lot of what we do is trying to um bridge to the traditional gamers and, and get them um, to bo onboard them to uh, become, you know, crypto enthusiasts or at least, you know, blockchain gamers. Um, and Bitcoin plays a part in this and, and it's, you know, um, the familiarity uh, among the, the uh, in society around Bitcoin and, and um, the trust that it has. So I think it's an easier, easier uh, gap to bridge is that from, you know, Bitcoin to traditional gamers than, you know, some some random crypto to traditional gamers. And, and you know, with random crypto, I mean, most people well, most people know about Bitcoin, uh, but uh, might not be, you know, very familiar with, you know, Ethereum even. And I've seen a lot of talk on Twitter lately, and, and people have asked me, how do we get more people into stacks, into crypto? Yeah, we. I mean, we definitely think that for a lot of people, their first exposure to crypto and blockchain is going to come from gaming, especially the next generation, all the kids today. I mean, that's, that's how they're going to be exposed to it. I think the great thing about that is that they're going to grow up crypto native from an early age because the games that they're going to be playing are going to be, you know, blockchain enhanced, you know, or, or, or blockchain games. So I definitely think that the first large scale mainstream application that most people will really come into contact with is going to be a game. Um, and that's why I think blockchain gaming is is important. You know, it's not just going to be a good, you know, business, you know, an interesting business model to explore, but it is going to be a really important way of how we explain what blockchain is to the mass market. And and so like like Han said, we are designing a game with the mass market in mind and we want to appeal to mainstream gamers and we want to show them what a blockchain game could look like and should look like, um, and not some of the stereotypes already out there about what's happening in crypto. You know that it's a that it's a scam, that it's pump and dump, NFTs. You know what the hell is that? You're just buying a JPEG. I mean, there's a lot of these kind of like negative ideas floating out there in the mainstream world. And it's because they still don't quite understand what blockchain really is, what an NFT really is, or how any of this works. And I think a, a game environment is a perfect opportunity to to teach people and to show them what uh, what a what blockchain really is uh, and what a token could really be and what NFTs really could be. Can you explain the difference between the co-op, the multiplayer uh, role game, or just the single player adventure? Yeah, um, I think a lot of this will become more clear when we publish our white paper, which we should be publishing, I think, before the end of the year, um, or not, you know, early next year. The, the you know, the single player multiplayer co-op and pvp battles are all going to coexist and there's a different role for each of them depending on the kind of gamer that you are so the single player game is going to really be there to explain the backstory um sometimes you want just a more you know i mean you, you want to do a single player game you don't want to get into an online competition so there's a reason to always have a single player game you know beyond just telling the story but it's also going to have an important uh role and function in our token economy um, and in introducing gamers to what Moonray is. The multiplayer co-op missions are gonna be there to expand on the story, uh, explore different storylines you know, within the world. And they also will have a different role, but an important role in, in the token economy. And then the PVP battles, I think are, are probably gonna be like the heart of Moonray for, for a lot of people for quite a while. Just because, you know, competitive online play is always, you know, I mean, it, it really, it's always fun. So. Um, but it's going to depend on the kind of gamer you are. I mean, some people are going to be more drawn to the competitive environment. Some people more to the single player environment. And then I think that when we have our multiplayer cities up and running, that's going to provide, uh, provide a, a totally different type of interaction that some gamers are going to be more drawn to. You know, for example, um, in the multiplayer cities, it's going to be more of a social interaction and an economic interaction. You know, that's, that's where you can have a shop and sell your own NFTs that you're making, for example. Um, or you can just get together with friends. You can have your own land and your own um buildings and houses that you decorate the way that you want um so if you're not even that much into the gaming side of things at all the multiplayer cities are still going to be you know um a, a place for people to to hang out and really just experience the the, the metaverse 
without the um, you know the, uh, the 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 complication of, of gameplay or competitive gameplay or even single player gameplay. So essentially, it's like we think of it as like different subsets of of people that have different uh, interests, and then each game type, you know, caters to a different a different subset. And in, your regard, in regards to uh, your question about NFTs, uh, obviously, they, you know, an NFT purchased or, or created will be, you will be able to use that in whichever game game mode that you that you want to play, and if it's PvP or if it's single player or or the multiplayer campaigns. Do you think onboarding uh, kids and, and a group of people that are completely uh, don't know about blockchain, that gaming will get them to understand ownership in the digital world and, and, and how to like, how to use a Web3 wallet, how to secure your seed phrase? I think gaming is going to be a huge part of that um, into getting people in, but then I also think gaming is going to force some of those technologies to mature. So a lot of this, I mean, there's a reason to, you know, take control of your own seed phrase and have your private keys and have a hardware wallet. I think there's always going to be a good reason for that. But I think there's also going to be opportunities to make the technology more seamless um, and, and improve the way that the, the technology works. Um, and I think gaming is going to kind of force the issue to a degree. Um, uh, that, that's some of the stuff that we're working on now is making as seamless a, um, a user experience as we possibly can. It's going to take quite a while to get there. I, so I do think it comes from both ways. It comes in one part, educating people as to how blockchain works. And from the other part is we got to make blockchain work a little better so that it can be adopted by, you know, the, the mainstream markets um, because it should be. And right now, I think sometimes we make it needlessly complicated. And part of that's just, you know, it's the infancy of this technology and it's maturing rapidly. So there's no way to avoid it. But um, I do think that's going to be one of the opportunities of gaming is to, to kind of force the issue of, okay, we got to make this as simple to use um, as possible while not giving up security. How do we do that? Can you can you tell us about the characters? What kind of NFTs will be available? Will it, will it be on distributed marketplaces that we see on, uh, organically build around Stacks NFTs? Um, initially, no. We're building our own NFT marketplace, um, and there's some reasons for that that we have to have some control over um, how things work so we can integrate it properly in the game. I think at some point, um, taking advantage of some of the the what's happening in DeFi with our NFTs is 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 going to happen, uh, um, and we're we're working towards that. We're partnered with Alex, for example, it's in the Stacks ecosystem on AlexGo.io. We're going to be working with them on doing you know things with our NFTs, uh, like turning them into financial instruments and things like that. Um, so that is going to come, um, and then where it goes from there. I mean, we do believe in decentralization and and, and being to take your NFTs anywhere you want. Um, but where we're going to start is with our own marketplace um, so that we, we can have some control over exactly how things are handled and that we know that we can integrate things properly with the game uh, the way we need it to. I know Megapont is going to be one of your partners uh, for whitelist opportunities. Uh, are there any other NFT artists or, or projects, Crash Punks? that is working with Moonray? We are working with Crash Punks as, as well. Um, we're working with Megapunks and we're always, you know, happy to talk to any other cool projects that are out there. Um, um, you know, we, you know, we, we believe in, in kind of like, uh, everyone's got to help each other out, you know, to a degree, like this is a, a large community and, we, and we've got to grow it. So we are always interested in, in, in cool collaborations that we can do. And also on the note of collaborations and artists, we, we, um, we are also working with um, artists to bring their art into the game and you know uh, make sure that um, them they can create their own businesses or, or at least revenue streams from collaborating with us um, in terms of selling nfts uh, etc some really cool guys that you know are out there procedural artists uh, etc i think that's going to be pretty awesome to to go to this community plaza and be able to create your own your own space there on, on that land, that digital land. I mean, right now we're just kind of going uh, individually to artists that we think that their style matches what we're doing. I think there is going to be at some point in the future an opportunity. You know, um, we do want to have a beta server uh, once we get in our, our multiplayer cities up and running. Have a, a beta server up as well for people to experiment and explore. There's always going to have to be some level of like, um, let's say like 
you know, at, at some point the DAO is going to be the one that decides what can make it into the actual game or not, because we do want to maintain a consistent, you know, visual look. Um, but we do want to be open um, and think about the, you know, creation of art as, um, in, in some cases, it's like a federation, you know, like a collective. And we're working with other artists out there who, you know, aren't necessarily, let's say, hired by us, but we, we provide a platform for them to bring something cool um, to Moonray that fits the, the Moonray style. Can you tell us about the, your experience in the Stacks Accelerator? For us, the Accelerator was fantastic. It was a great experience. We, we learned a ton. You know, I mean, it really was like a, like a boot camp type of experience. It was really intense. Um, it opened up a ton of doors, uh, introduced us to a ton of people. So I would definitely recommend it to anyone, any other companies out there that are, you know, curious about blockchain. I think if you're a gaming company and you're not the really curious about blockchain, you're in big trouble. Um, so I would definitely uh, recommend any gaming company out there. If you think that this is something you can ignore, you're, you're dead wrong. And, and uh, you should start paying attention. And from that standpoint, getting involved in an accelerator like Stacks is a really great way of, of going about it. What is something that people don't understand about Stacks, the proof of transfer, or, or being able to to uh, use Bitcoin as the final final settlement layer. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely uh, one interesting thing that kind of takes a little while to wrap your head around is the difference between staking and stacking. Um, and even in the nomenclature, a lot of times we you know we mix it up and confuse it. But it's I think it's an important distinction that with stacks, it's possible to you know stake a token or stack a token and earn a different token. And with most you know with everything else that, that's out there. And with most of the projects, like you know, every other game project that we've seen, when you stake a token, you earn more of that same token. With Stacks, it's possible to stake a token and earn a different token, and that's inherent in the in the proof of transfer um, mechanism. So that's a really, I think, powerful feature. Um, and then it has there's all sorts of technical things that go along with that. I mean, that's how you can secure the Stacks, you know, blockchain with the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, but we're really excited uh, eventually about you know the scalability solutions that Stacks is developing, you know, both subnets and app chains. You know, one, by the time that app chains are up and running and you can basically run a copy of stacks on stacks then it creates this ability to have a whole different type of stacking rewards the, the kind of things that city coins is exploring right now um uh, where you can you know stack one token and earn another token as a reward and i think that's a very unique feature of stacks that could have a lot of um implications in the way that certain programs are, are, are designed in the future yeah, I think from my standpoint, uh, completely different angle. I, I would probably say that uh, this, un, what what I perceive as an underestimation of how fast growing uh, the Stacks ecosystem is and the type of support that you can get by being part of it. It's something that we constantly, you know, we hear questions: Why Stacks? Uh, you know, you can get this and that. You know, if, if you were to develop in this on on a, on a different blockchain. But you know, I think with that statement, it's also an inherent, you know. Un underestimate you, you underestimate what's going on on the stacks ecosystem i think you will be amazed almost will be amazed if they just you know look under the hood and see see what's going on and, and you know where this will be in a year from now or even a few months from now for that matter and then the whole um issue of like clarity um versus other languages as a whole that's another rabbit hole you can go down but i do think that the like you said the, the foresight um, that they put into the, the way that they made the clarity language as a as a not a compiled language as an interpreted language you know as a turing incomplete language which in theory limits your um the flexibility of the language but in practice doesn't actually seem to um and it looks like you can build pretty much anything that you can build with solidity or with any other language on clarity but you do get a whole lot of, of security you know benefits so I, I think it is a good way of looking at stacks is that it really is built for the long term um and since that's kind of the way that we think about our game, that we're building it for the long term, for us being on stacks, this made a lot of sense. Thanks for watching our short series, Built on Stacks, secured by Bitcoin. Thanks to Freehold and Trevor and the Stacks Accelerator. Zero Authority is a community of people who believe in open source and permissionless systems. Remember why you started.